coming up on AgWeek TV. We're talking carbon at the Evolution Ag Summit in Jamestown, North Dakota. We focus on the topic of food security and how it differs in rural versus urban settings. And our Agri Livestock Tour continues with the South Dakota Show Goat Operation. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Emily Beal. This week we're on location at the Evolution Ag Summit in Jamestown, North Dakota. It's put on by the North Dakota Farmers Union and centered around carbon. It focuses on how carbon reduction initiatives may shape agriculture and food supply chains. The event brought together food and agribusiness people along with farmers and ranchers to further understand the topic of carbon. One of the headline speakers at the event was Colin Beal. Reporter Jenny Schlecht had a chance to chat with him. Thanks, Emily. I'm here with Colin Beal. He's an engineer and cattle rancher from Wyoming. He's also the CEO and founder of Low Carbon Beef. Yeah, so I started Low Carbon Beef as a way to add value to producers that are producing cattle with reduced greenhouse gas emissions, as well as provide more information for consumers that are concerned about the environmental impact of the beef that they're purchasing. So. Uh, we are a certification company and we certify cattle that are raised with reduced greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we were recently acquired by Select Sires and we'll be operating under a new company that's called Low Carbon Technologies uh, and potentially expanding into the dairy space as well. So what are the, some of the things that you look at? Yeah, so we gather data throughout the whole life cycle. So we use the life cycle assessment to quantify the greenhouse gas emissions. And so we start with source and age verification and we're really certifying the animals. We're not certifying the raising locations. And so, uh, you know, we need to trace the animals all the way back to the, the range of birth. And then we gather information about what we consider the four Fs. So feed, fuel, fertilizer, and function or cattle performance. So that's going to include things like nitrogen fertilizer use, feed efficiency of the slaughter calves, and feed efficiency of the, of the mama cows as well. How many producers do you work with right now? We've had quite a few that have reached out and we've started enrolling those cattle into the, the program. We are looking for more all the time and including uh, finding some that can uh, participate in the Climate Smart Commodities uh, project. So we're always, always looking to add more cattle to the inventory. Colin Beal, thank you for joining us at the Evolution Ag Summit. Thanks, Jenny. Joining me now at the Evolution Ag Summit is Paul Overby. So Paul, tell me about your operation. Sure, we farm up by Wolfer, North Dakota and we've been farming what's now called regeneratively for about 15 years. It started with uh, no-tilling and nutrient management and then we added cover crops into that along with a diverse array of different crops. So on 1,250 acres we'll be planting eight different crops this year and all of that helps to build soil health and increase the carbon in the soil. My goal is to get our soil organic matter on our farm back into the six, seven, eight percent range that it would have been when it was native prairie. The thing that maybe people don't understand is soil organic matter is 50 percent soil organic carbon. So as you build soil organic matter in the soils, restoring it back to the, to the prairie state as best as possible, you're actually building carbon in the soil too. Do you think more farmers are starting to farm regeneratively? So yeah, it's easier now. There's a lot of interest in this space. There wasn't uh, 15, 20 years ago. And so I think for farmers, between the equipment and the education, they have the tools now. Now it's uh, maybe a change of mindset. I think once you decide you're going to do this, then everything else will flow. But it really is the, the concept of, I'm going to change from doing things this way to doing things this way. And that's, that's a challenge. Well, thank you so much for your insight today. Wolford, North Dakota farmer, Paul Overby. This month, Ag Week has been taking an in-depth look at the Farm Bill, and our cover story this week focuses on food insecurity. Hunger isn't just an urban issue, it's very much a rural issue. According to a 2022 report by Feeding America, counties with the highest rate of food insecurity are disproportionately rural, and a decrease in funding of SNAP in the next Farm Bill will overwhelm already overloaded food organizations. Emergency SNAP benefits put in place by the federal government during the pandemic will end in March, and that will only make things tougher. It's why organizations like the Great Plains Food Bank, the only food bank in North Dakota, constantly advocates for a new farm bill that includes a strong SNAP program. If funding were cut out of the program, if the program just went away, um, we, those individuals that you know, rely on the program are going to need to seek food assistance other places. And like the Great Plains Food Bank and, and you know, with our current demand, 
you know, to see that escalate even higher would be an increase in demand that we would struggle to be able to adapt to. So um, we're always going to advocate for, you know, a strong farm bill and a strong SNAP program because of, of what it does to, to feed those in need. Last year in Minnesota, visits to food shelves went up by more than 50%. Providing food aid is one of the goals of the North Harvest Bean Growers Association. Beans are a nutritionally dense product that's high in fiber, protein rich, and is very easy to transport, which makes it great to ship across the world for those in need. North Harvest Bean Growers President Eric Samuelson spoke about this at a recent Bean Day event. There's always a need for food aid around the world, so I think we've, we've grown more focused on using and developing a, a food aid program here at North Harvest. We're able to distribute our, our beans around the world, so that's another use of our products. Convoy of Hope, a faith-based food organization, partnered with North Harvest in Central Valley Bean Co-op in Buxton, North Dakota last fall to feed 60,000 bean-based meals to the hungry in Guatemala and Honduras. Those beans came from their growers and we were able to send them to Latin America. Making the personal connections and telling the story is really what Convoy is about and connecting people to those most vulnerable around the world. Convoy of Hope says it would love to partner with more edible bean dealers for food aid. They provide food aid to Central America, Africa, Asia and Europe. When Ag Week TV continues from the Evolution Ag Summit, a former South Dakota Ag official says growing animal ag in North Dakota can work. For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. The International Crop Expo is at Alaris Center, February 22nd and 23rd. This is the region's best agriculture show of the year, packed full of the latest equipment and innovations. Take this opportunity to explore all areas of the agriculture world. Visit with ag professionals on hand and discuss the newest techniques and strategies in farming and much more. February 22nd and 23rd at Alaris Center is the International Crop Expo. Admission is free. Farming is more than just work. It's your way of life. Protecting your family's legacy is our way of life. Through challenges and successes, we understand your family's insurance needs. With every turn of the wheel, for every investment, through every season, generation after generation, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. There's no easy button, no guarantees, or promises of a good year. This is farming. It's unpredictable and demanding with long days and sometimes stressful nights. It's weathering the storms and coming out successful. Farming isn't for everyone. We thank those who make it their life because it is for everyone. Is your crop insurance working for you? Are you using your crop insurance to help market your production? There have been a lot of improvements to crop insurance to help maximize guarantees. To see what crop insurance can really do for you, call the professionals at Martinson Ag. Each of our insurance specialists have over 25 years of individual experience in the crop insurance industry, both on the company level and the producer level. Martinson Ag, they know risk management. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. This week, our Ag Week Livestock Tour takes us to East Central South Dakota. I visited Peterson Livestock in Fedora, where they're offering more than just one type of show goat. My mom, big fan of color. For every regular goat we buy that Dad and I want, we have to buy a colored goat to make Mom happy. Hannah Peterson and her father Robert offer both market weather and full blood goat genetics on their operation, giving their customers an array of options to take into the show ring. 
Their goat operation began around a decade ago and includes about 100 does. And they have buck partnerships with producers in Texas. This helps them keep premium genetics in their herd despite their out-of-the-way location. South Dakota is more of a rural place and not so easy accessible compared to like the other show states like Indiana and Iowa and down south. So we kind of raise as many good goats as we can naturally. The Petersons were happy with their last kidding season, saying it was one of their easiest to date. All in all, they had about 100 kids hit the ground and enjoy seeing their offspring improve each season. That's one thing I like about the goats. You can see a definite improvement in quality as far as structure, muscle, uh, every year. I mean, and from when we started to now, it's, it's amazing how they've changed. Boar goats originated in South Africa, so the South Dakota winter takes a toll on the Peterson's herd. They don't take the cold. We've bred these goats to be thinner hided, so they just can't handle the cold like, uh, like a full bloods. I've noticed our full bloods can handle the cold better than, you know, those thin hided, uh, skinny necked weather type. And for being a newer species, we've really progressed them fast and made them really good quality, which I find really interesting and fun to see how, uh, to see what we'll do next. There you go, go in there, Elvis. Peterson Livestock sells their stock online, in person, and through private treaty. If animal agriculture is going to grow in North Dakota, it'll likely be led by the southeast corner of the state due to proximity to processing opportunities. That's according to a man who helped promote animal ag in South Dakota a decade ago. Nathan Sanderson was a senior advisor for the South Dakota Governor's Office on Ag and the Environment 10 years ago, when the state saw livestock numbers begin to rebound after decades of decline. And he says the groundwork was laid at the local level. I think we built a good coalition and we had a lot of different people having a lot of coffee table conversations. I mean, you're, when you're sitting in somebody's kitchen and you're talking about a livestock development project, that's a lot more personal than some government bureaucrat, you know, coming to a meeting and saying, this is good for you. And so it was a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions that were necessary. And I think we saw that they were successful in changing the narrative. Sanderson told Ag Week that North Dakota's laws that prevent corporate ownership of farmland doesn't mean animal ag can't grow. I also don't think that it's quite as large of a hindrance as what a lot, a lot of people would say, simply because you're going to structure your operation in the way that's going to be best suited for the laws that are available to you locally. This week, the North Dakota House voted in favor of a bill that would make it easier for animal ag to reverse decades of declines with help from outside investors. The bill now advances to the Senate. There's a new pest soybean farmers will need to start keeping an eye out for. At a recent soybean research event, Minnesota Extension educator Anthony Hansen talked about the tentiform leaf miner. It causes white veins in soybean leaves that eventually become puffy, like a tent. It's mostly known to be in southern Minnesota, but that could be deceiving because it's so new they haven't even been looking for it yet. Another new but more familiar pest is the soybean gall midge. It's been mostly in southwest Minnesota, but it's spreading. It is feeding on the stem of the plant. It is basically a orange maggot you'll find if you peel back the uh, outer layer of the plant a little bit. But the problem is, is that will girdle the whole plant and you will get 100% yield loss on your field edges if you have heavy infestations of this. Scouting for it can be a challenge because the evidence of the midge will show up at the base of the plant and the adults are very tiny, about the size of a gnat. How can a product called Aqua Yield improve your yield? find out as our show continues from the Evolution Ag Summit. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. Spray Advantage is a full-line, full-service dealer with everything you need for fertilizer and chemical applications, like electronics from Microtrack and Raven, pumps by Banjo and John Blue, a full line of poly parts, tanks, and spray tips. We support the equipment we sell with factory-trained service technicians and a well-stocked parts department. It's our commitment to offer you quality products at competitive prices with the best financing options available. Spray Advantage, proudly serving North Dakota and Minnesota. Since the inception of Vatterstadt, 
The spirit of innovation has led the company. We push the limits, providing innovative and reliable seating and tillage solutions that simplify everyday life for farmers. We continue to reimagine the capabilities and technology behind farm machinery, providing customers with a perfect emergence while maximizing their yields. We look forward to growing together. I'm Peter Bosch. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there, tell them your plans and your future dreams and let them design something for you. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Can we expect these winter storms to last? Here's our agri weather outlook. Weather pattern now with February turning to March. Arctic air is really in retreat. It's not going to be quite as cold. However, the northern plains and much of the Great Lakes still looking to stay generally colder than average. And we have a snow track. Uh, weather pattern looks to bring uh, probably several chances of additional snow into the northern plains and Great Lakes area over the next couple of weeks. And further south and east on the central and eastern parts of the Corn Bean Belt, it looks rainy. So it's a wet start to the month of March in most of the agricultural areas of the central and eastern United States. At the present time, Jetstream has a little bit of a split over the uh, Rockies, which continues the supply of cold air throughout the Rocky Mountains and down into the southwest. Turns out this is not the greatest of seasons to be visiting Arizona. You'll get some beautiful days, of course, but it's not consistently warm. South Florida is warm. South Texas is warm. Northern Plains, Great Lakes, and Rockies will remain relatively cold and and mostly below freezing. You may get a few days where it gets up to near freezing, but this is not a warm weather pattern. This is a cold weather pattern, even though the sub-zero stuff, at least the daytime sub-zero stuff, has retreated. Uh, there will be a bit of a cool down into the deep south toward the end of the week and into the weekend, and as the month of March really kicks in, it will continue to be colder than average and mostly colder than 32 degrees across the northern Rockies, the northern plains, and the Great Lakes. There will be intrusions of warm air up into the lower part of the Midwest. And with this particular shape of a weather pattern, it does favor precipitation systems, which would likely bring the chance for some rain. And that's the forecast this week. There will be a chance, looks like early in the week, and maybe a second one of some light freezing precipitation or snow. Most likely this will end up being snow uh, for the most part, but I put the pink in there because I think there might be some frozen stuff. A little further south, a little bit of a rain-snow mix through the Midwest, and then a lot of this is likely to be rain in places like southern Illinois, southern Indiana, and southern Ohio. The only Certainly dry area is going to be the Rio Grande because the West Coast will bring some snows down into the Rockies and a little chain of systems moving from north to south along the West Coast will continue to bring precipitation, some of it fairly heavy, to uh, the uh, southwest and the western states. The last week of this forecast, which is now full-on March weather, I still think the pattern looks pretty snowy across the northern plains. This might not be one big storm, but a sequence of lows that would bring chances for measurable snow. So an active weather pattern moving into March, and that snow will turn into a mixture or rain as we get down into the lower portions of the Midwest. Either way, it looks like a fairly wet pattern, cold in the north and a little warmer than average in the southern parts of the Corn Belt. Omega-3 is a, is a long-chain fatty acid that is beneficial in the human body. It's a superfood, basically. I mean, Omega-3 canola has helped us by diversifying our crop rotations. Plants look better, they're taller, they're thicker. Pod development seems to be better. Good for soil health, good for weed control. The glufosinate is, it's awesome. 
Since the inception of Vatterstadt, the spirit of innovation has led the company. We push the limits, providing innovative and reliable seating and tillage solutions that simplify everyday life for farmers. We continue to reimagine the capabilities and technology behind farm machinery, providing customers with a perfect emergence while maximizing their yields. We look forward to growing together. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. We at the Mosaic Company hang our hat on the fact that we are crop nutrition leaders. That's why we have produced products like Micro Essentials, Aspire, Sestera, which help that plant utilize certain key nutrients differently than what just straight commodity products do. And we want to increase that yield, but we also want to increase the ROI. Because ultimately our goal is to help the farmer have a better yield, a better ROI, and do it in a sustainable way. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts a dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for watching Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Joining me now is Severin Anderson. So Severin, tell me a little bit about your operation. We farm up by Drayton, North Dakota. It's a family farm. We have about 2,500 acres and we grow sugar beets, uh, wheat, and soybeans. And you guys use aqua yield on your acres. How did you learn about this nano liquid technology? After we tried the calcium, the people from ECO suggested that we try some of the other products. And so the first year we did a four 40 acre plot test on a quarter of sugar beets. And we had such good results that we ended up using it on pretty much every acre we had within the next year. And what rates do you apply uh, aqua yield onto your acres? All the nano products are four ounces. They mix with anything. You can mix them in at any time. I think we've tried 14 different combinations and we've never had any issue with volatility or mixing. So that's been a key reason why we've kept using it. And how has this nano liquid technology changed your soil's health? We've seen improvements in, in all our crops. The bottom line on it is that it's not adding any salt to the the soil, which almost every fertilizer is salt-based in some aspects. And what has your return of investment been like when you're using aqua yield on your acres? Well, with the Nano-K, when you're able to increase the sugar content in sugar beets, you know, that's what we get paid on. So even adding a point or a half a point in sugar uh, makes a massive difference. Soybeans being able to lower soluble salts in there, we've been able to get a big increase in yields, especially on flood ground where we're by the river there. And then the Nano Pro that helps with the Roundup and efficiency of the Roundup. We've had good results on all the crops we've used it on so far. And can you share which products you use and what crops you use those products on? So we use the uh, Nano CS, which is in with our uh, calcium and our regular starter in uh, sugar beets. And then throughout the year when we're spraying Roundup, we use the Nano Pro to help with the efficacy of that. And later in the year when we're doing Cercospa spraying, we added the Nano K to help try and boost the sugars a little bit. On the beans, we've been using the Nano Pack, the Nano Stress, and the Nano Pro with the Roundup there as well. And then this is the first year we're gonna be trying their Nano K or Nano N product, which is a nitrogen one. So if you're talking to a fellow farmer or a friend, is this Nano Liquid technology something that you would recommend to them? Absolutely. We've had a couple of different neighbors that are, are starting to use the products now too and I think it's it's kind of the next wave and stuff that, that farming's always been on the cutting edge on some of these things, whether it's the GPS or any of these technologies. Now when we're getting into the chemical and the soil side of it, this nano technology that these guys have and able to get it into the plant faster, moving faster, it's helping the plant grow faster, it's changing the soils faster. This is kind of the next wave I think that's going to be coming here and, and these guys are on the leading edge of it for sure. Well, thank you for joining us, Severin Anderson. To learn more about how Aqua Yield works, contact Jim Erickson at ECO at the number or email on your screen. Still ahead from the Evolution Ag Summit in Jamestown, North Dakota, the administrator of the FSA gets a first-hand look at Minnesota's tree range farm. Attention farmers and ranchers, do you have a clear understanding of carbon? 
North Dakota Farmers Union is hosting the Evolution Ag Summit, a one-day event focused on helping farmers and ranchers understand how carbon reduction may impact their operation. Speakers will focus on supply chain commitments, renewable fuels, and carbon sequestration. Join us in Jamestown on February 21st. To register, go to ndfu.org and click on Evolution Ag. Stop by the Erickson Custom Operations booth during the International Crop Expo at the Alera Center. Aqua Yield reps will be there to discuss proven nano liquid technology, and calcine reps will be on hand to walk through your saline soil issues. That's February 22nd from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and February 23rd from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the International Crop Expo, booth 533. Attend the 41st annual Ag Week Farm Show, March 7th and 8th at the Olmsted County Fairgrounds. This year's show will have interesting speakers from the world of agriculture and cheese curd samples from Little Red Dairy Creamery. We will include presentations on succession planning, an agriculture update from the Department of Transportation, finding employees for farms and ag businesses, and oat marketing in Southeast Minnesota. We'll see you at the show. There's no easy button, no guarantees, or promises of a good year. This is farming. It's unpredictable and demanding with long days and sometimes stressful nights. It's weathering the storms and coming out successful. Farming isn't for everyone. We thank those who make it their life because it is for everyone. Omega-3 is a, is a long chain fatty acid that is beneficial in the human body. It's a superfood, basically. I mean, it's Omega-3 canola has helped us by diversifying our crop rotations. Plants look better, they're taller, they're thicker. Pod development seems to be better. Good for soil health, good for weed control. The glufosinate is, it's awesome. The administrator for USDA's Farm Service Agency recently toured Tree Range Farm's prototype poultry production site. The 65-acre farm in southeast Minnesota showcases an economically viable farm enterprise assembly, which Tree Range Farms will seek to replicate many hundreds of times to build the regional blueprints across the country. It confirmed what I'd known about the work that Ray and the team are doing. It's a solution. It's, it's part of a a grander solution that we really need to take a look at if we're going to meaningfully empower producers to impact for the better climate change. Ducheneau also toured Tree Range Farm's newest site, a demonstration and training farm, and the first to be built with full integration of the key farm enterprise components. Thanks for joining us this week from the Evolution Ag Summit in Jamestown. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok to keep up on all your ag news. Have a wonderful week, everyone.